Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Stan Valens and I'm joined here today by Rita Diaz. Yes, and we're going to talk to you about Azure Synapse and Power BI reporting at the speed of light. While previously we had our uh, topic as Azure Data Warehouse and reporting and Power BI and reporting at the speed of light. But since we submitted the session, a lot has changed in uh, the Microsoft environment. And now we're going to talk about Azure Synapse SQL pools and Power BI uh, reporting at the speed of light. But first, a few notes on ourselves. So my name is Stan Wijnands. I am a customer engineer at Microsoft. Uh, this used to be a premier field engineer. Oh, let me switch back to that slide. We used to be a premier field engineer. Uh, my hobbies include uh, cycling, uh, food and coffee. Also maybe beer a little bit, but I don't want to put that on the slide. Uh, and I let Rita introduce herself. Hi, my name is Rita. I'm um, also a customer engineer based in Portugal. And as you can see here, I love traveling, reading and playing the occasional game. OK, cool, Rita. So Rita, what are we going to talk to uh, talk about with uh, our uh, audience today? Yes, so you're going to talk about Azure yes. Synapse. Indeed. Um, Indeed about distribution and replication, materialized views and results at caching. And then I'm going to grab those concepts and put them into Power BI in action by using import versus direct query, then talking about aggregations and composite models. This is going to be so cool. <laughs> OK, so uh, I'll start off with Azure Synapse. So let's start off by talking about Azure Synapse. So the first part of the session is going to be about the actual hardware, which is behind uh, the thing we're going to see to get that report as fast as possible. So the strategy we're leveraging here is using Azure Synapse to serve those multi-billion row tables, which we are going to test upon, to actually get the data there as fast as possible. And we're using Azure Synapse for this. Don't get it mixed up with Azure Synapse workspaces or the SQL on demand. We're looking at the Azure SQL Synapse SQL pools. Okay. Now, Azure Synapse is one of the MPP systems, so massive parallel processing, which means that we actually have queries coming in um, who go to a control node, and the control node will then distribute the work to be done across all compute nodes which are behind it and behind that they have Azure Storage, which means that. Um, if one query gets executed, it gets executed by a lot of nodes in the background and they send the results to the control node and that gets delivered to the uh, user, which is asking for a certain result or a certain report. Now, uh, that control node will have distribution across all these nodes here, and that can be up to 60 nodes with uh, Azure Synapse as we have it here now. Okay. Um, so up to 60 nodes, and there's two types of distribution we have here. We have distributed tables and replicated tables. Uh, distributed tables means that one table, it's usually for fact tables or the larger tables you have, will be distributed across those 60 nodes to actually cope with all those uh, nodes together to fetch the query results faster. Now, with uh, replicated tables are usually for the dim dimension tables, and those dimension tables will be replicated on each compute node, which means that you will have the replicated table here, and here, and here, and here, and the distributed table will have a one, the part one here, part two, two three, three here, four there. So basically the distribution is across all those nodes, while the replicated tables will be on each node independently to serve certain join classes, okay? Now, moving on to distributed and replicated tables, uh, there can be distribution across, uh, uh, across of these tables across on the M MPP system. And there's two types of distribution you have. You've got hash distribution, you've got round robin distribution. Now hash distribution is when we're going to distribute the data based on a certain key. For example, we have a big fact table and in that fact table we have um, a product key. And that product key is going to be used in a lot of join classes to other uh, fact tables or uh, even other dimensions. So um, to increase speed of those join classes, um, we can distribute that data hashed on that product key, which means that across those 16 nodes, that product key will be distributed evenly. So whenever we're trying to get a query with that distribution key of the product key, we will use all those nodes together to fetch the result in a single way to the compute node. 
Um, next to that, if you don't really know what you're going to use and how you're going to use your data, you can use round-robin distribution. And round-robin distribution will then just distribute the data in a round-robin fashion, so not structured by any key or anything like that. Now, round-robin distribution is going to be faster when loading the data for the first time. Hash distribution will be better in performing your queries. So there's always a difference between loading data and performing data. Replication, so the replicated tables will replicate all data on all nodes, which means we will replicate a dimension table, for example, of dim date on all nodes. So whenever we're doing a query against dim date and a fact table, we don't need to shuffle data around between those different nodes. That's, this is actually what we're trying to avoid in this MPP system, the shuffling of data. We want the, 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 the actions that we're doing to happen on those nodes, and we don't want to get data from node 1 to node 2 and shuffle it around because that will be a slower action. We actually just want to give our results without shuffling that data and sending it straight to the compute nodes, the results of our part of the data, which we are actually um, putting a query on. We don't want to make sure that uh, we first have to shuffle from node one to node two, from node two to node three to actually serve a query. Um, we want to be able to have node one do its work, do node two do its work, node three do its work, and send that to the compute node directly without shuffling the data around, which slows down the query. And this is what we do with the distributed tables. We distribute it across a certain product key, which gets used a lot in joins, for example. And we replicate the dimension tables to make sure that every join we're doing with a dimension table can happen locally on one node. Now, next to that, there are some risks here. Uh, and one of the risks is by choosing a wrong distribution key, you can have something called skewed data which means that a lot of data will be on node one, node two, or node three, and the other 57 nodes will not be used at all because there's not really any data in it. For example, product key one has uh, 2 billion uh, rows, while product key two only has 20 rows. Then it would not be good to actually distribute it on uh, the hash of the product key because we will have skewed data, which means some nodes will have all the data, while other nodes will not have a lot of data, which actually um, will greatly decrease the performance of that system. And of course, as I mentioned before, we have the difference between loading data and performing data. You can even send it to basically on those distributed tables, it's always clustered columns or indexes, but for loading data, you can also have a heap table and also with the round robin distribution, you can increase the speed that you're loading data to those specific, um, to those specific tables, okay? Uh, performing data, I just put this here, Choosing the right distribution key is really key to increase the speed of the queries happening. Okay, and so that's it on distributed and replicated tables. Um, let's move on to the next slide then, which is a demo where I'm going to show you now what a distributed table is, how do you distribute, what happens if we join two big fact tables together, and how do you read the query plans to see if it's good or if it's bad. So as you can see now that I am on my management studio and inside my management studio, I am connected to my Azure data warehouse on sqlstand.database.windows.net to the Azure data warehouse or Azure Synapse SQL pool called SQLstan. As you can see, I have multiple tables here. I filtered on the fact tables and you can see that I have a fact internet sales table, uh, which is distributed. You can see it by the icon. So this icon means that the data is distributed and it is distributed on this specific key, which is product key. So that's fact internet sales. Next to this, we have fact sales over here, fact sales, which is distributed as well, but on a different table, on a different column, sorry, called customer key, okay? Now, if we're looking a little bit further, I also have another table, which is called fact sales well distributed, and that's also distributed on the product key. Now, I'm going to do two queries here. Uh, the first one is getting the data from fact internet sales joined with the DBO fact sales on product key, which means if we do this join, we will not be able to leverage the distribution we have because fact internet sales is distributed on product key, but fact sales is distributed on customer key, which means we will have issues joining that data together. So we will be shuffling the data from fact sales to the nodes of internet sales, which will slow down the query. These tables are about the same size, about 120 million rows each, which will then slow down, of course, the query when we're trying to do that join. Now, 
I'm not going to execute this query at this moment. I'm just going to show you the query plan. So I'm going to display the estimated execution plan for this query. Um, also good to note, you cannot show an actual plan here. Uh, you can get that from the DMVs to see what actual numbers you got, but there's no way of showing an actual plan here. Now, if we look here, we can see that, of course, we first get everything from that fact internet sales table, but we also get it from the fact table and we need to shuffle that data to actually get that join to work. Once we have that join to work, we can have the group by and then send it to the, to the control nodes to actually group by the aggregate results and show us the select, which means here we're going to get about 1.5 gigabytes. It's about 133 million rows. And here we're going to get the same amount of rows and the same data size and we're getting it from the fact sales product key. So we need to distribute that fact sales product key first before we can actually do that join. Okay. Now, if I would then join with the fact uh, sales well distributed, which is both on the product key, which is not here on the customer key, but if you can see here, it is also a distributed table. You can see that's a distributed table by this icon and it's distributed on this specific key because you can see that the blue um, thing here as well. So they're both distributed on the product key. If we check the distribution, if we don't then go and see what the query plan tells us, you can see that we do not have that shuffle move here. We just have the get operation from the first table, the get operation from the second table, the join can be done, and then we group by, send it to the compute nodes and get our result. Now, what does this do for our performance? So if we go and look at the results, I prepared these results in uh, Azure Data Studio in a notebook. So as you can see here, I did the first query, which is DBO fact internet sales with the fact sales table. It executes in 32 uh, seconds, which is quite slow. If I then do the same thing with the right product key here, so still a big query to, uh, to execute, it takes only 15 seconds with the right distribution. So shuffling the data around doubles the amount of time you spend on those queries. So from 32 seconds to 15 seconds. So choosing the right distribution key is actually very, very important to make sure that your query performs in a good and uh, predictable way. So that concludes a bit about distributed and replicated tables. Uh, and I would like to continue by um, talking a bit more on extra optimization techniques for certain reports, which are slow, which is something called materialized views. Now, materialized views are actually the sort of index views you had on SQL Server as well. Uh, they're a bit different, but the concept is about the same. Um, and what it does, uh, this materialized views, they can reduce the execution time on complex queries. So for example, if you have a query on a certain view, which is going to join with 20 tables and, and, and two very big facts table joins, and basically that query is always going to take a lot of time to execute because you do a lot of operations. Now, if you would like to speed up that specific view or that specific uh, join class you're doing and all those queries you're doing, you can use a materialized view. And what is a materialized view? You're going to actually endure that data, that result of that view inside um, your uh, database, so inside your Azure Synapse uh, SQL pool. Now, the cool thing is um, you can reuse the plan for other queries. So whenever you are having uh, a materialized view um, and you're referencing the same data in the same way the, as a materialized view is doing, it will push down that uh, materialized view to those other queries as well to speed up those queries. So you don't only speed up the queries you're, when you're directly referencing the view, but also queries which have a similar uh, plan uh, or a similar access strategy as that materialized view will use that materialized view to get the data as well. Another good thing about this is, for example, you can have another dis a different distribution on those materialized views. For example, you need the materialized view to be able to join with the table on customer key, while the fact tables inside that materialized view are distributed on product key, you can put the distributed key, um, so the distribution you have on that materialized view to customer key instead of product key, which is the which is uh, what the fact table is based on, when, what, what is inside the materialized view. So it can have a dist different distribution than the tables which it's referencing. Now, very important to note is the for append we have here. So for append means that um, only when we're inserting data into that um, materialized view, that data will get inserted again to that table and there will won't be any impact. If we're, however, updating or deleting data, the materialized view will be disabled. 
And disabled means you need to rebuild it again um, before you start using that uh, materialized view again. So only for inserts, um, it will not be disabled, but once you update or delete uh, values inside the fact table or a table referencing that materialized view, you will have to rebuild that table again. Okay. Now let's have a demo on materialized views. So as you can see, I switched back to my uh, SQL Server Management Studio and I'm again on the SQL Stan uh, database with Windows Azure SQL DB and I've connected to my Azure Synapse. Uh, and what I want to show you here is that I have created a view called some view, which is going to do a quite complex query, uh, quite complex, not that complex. I'm going to do the sum of the sales amounts by yearly income. And I will join the fact internet sales, the big table with the dim customer table and the dim date table and group it by this. Okay. Um, now what I did was first execute this and to show you how long it took, as you can see here. Um, when executing the select from that view, um, it took me about 20 seconds, okay, to get that, uh, that amount of data. It's about 500 rows. Now, to solve that query, I actually materialized that data from that view, as you can see here, into a materialized view. So what I did was I created a materialized view uh, with distribution round robin, because I didn't really want to put a distribution key at, on it at this moment. And then I added that specific view uh, over here uh, and I just executed it. It took about one minute and 18 seconds to execute. And also something to note is I have um, for materialized view, this is sum in here. You will always need one of the aggregate functions like sum, min, max, or count big in there to actually be able to create that materialized view. Otherwise it will not work. So after creating that materialized view, um, I went back to my uh, Azure Data Studio and I executed that same query again. And as you can see now, the query now started executing from select star some, from some DBO view. So the same query now executes in 0 0.3 seconds. So we already went sub second now with our performance, which means that using this materialized view, we just optimized that query from about 20 seconds to 0.3 seconds, which is a great increase. So our reports are getting really, really fast now using this, um, this good thing called materialized views. Now the final part I want to talk to you about on optimizing your Azure Synapse Data Warehouse is result set caching. Result set caching is a caching mechanism built for Azure Synapse to cache query results for frequently accessed data which means that we have a specified caching system for queries which be are being executed a lot. For example, uh, some frequently accessed reports through direct query can really speed up by using this um, result set caching. Result set caching, the cache size is limited to one terabyte per database uh, and it has sort of a cleanup mechanism. Uh, this cleanup mechanism um, will happen um, in the fact that if a query or a result is not um, fetched again within 48 hours, it will be evicted from the cache or when the maximum size of the cache is reached, other results will be uh, switched out. You can also manually drop out all uh, cache by doing uh, just turning it off. So turning off results at caching or by executing the DBCC drop result cache set cache drop, drop result set cache uh, command on the database you want to drop it out of. Okay. Um, there are still limitations to results set caching, so you cannot use row level security with results set caching uh, combined. You cannot use 40 uh, larger than larger rows than 64 kilobytes. Uh, large data retrieval, so data up to 10 gigabytes will not be stored in re uh, results at caching neither. You cannot use user divide functions or non-deterministic functions. So apart from that, uh, everything you are going to request the first time, the second time should run a lot faster. So optimizing queries to get that lightning performance, which we're, gain which we're aiming at with Azure Synapse here and also Power BI later with Rita um, is uh, using that results at caching, we can greatly increase the speed that we have on that Azure Synapse. So what is results at caching? It's caching data for frequently, re, uh, frequently retrieved query results, which means uh, some reports will go a lot faster by using that results at caching. Uh, what I'm aiming at now is to go as fa even faster than the materialized views previously. 
so the materialized view went to 0 0.3 milliseconds. It's actually the rendering phase. I want to see if I can go even faster with the new queries. So let's move on to the demo of results at caching. So as you can see, we switched back to our um, management studio here. Uh, and I just want to show you one thing here is we are now currently in our master database context. Uh, and what I did was, I previously did, is I set the result set caching to off, which means that the result of this sys.databases query for specifically SQL Stan uh, Azure Synapse SQL pool will show us that the result set caching is now set to off. Okay, so on means zero, means it's off at this moment. Okay, so what I did was, I currently already turned it on again, so if I can show you here, if I execute this query, it will now show you that it's on again. Okay, that's by doing the statement off and changing it to on, that's it. Now, to show you the different results I had, uh, I also prepared these results inside my Azure Notebook again. So let's go to that one. And I am going to go up a little bit because I am here, starting here. So we here have the queries without results at caching. So this is the query I was testing with. Uh, this is a new query. So basically getting the average sale amount, uh, first name and last name, count product key, uh, and group by the first name and the last name. So the first execution took 10 seconds. And then the latter execution without results set caching turned on, took eight seconds. So basically executing the query once and twice, it speeds up a little bit, but not very dramatically. Then I turned the results set caching to on and I executed the same query again. And as you can see here, it, the first execution also took about eight seconds. But now a letter execution, so I executed that query twice again, you can see now that the result was returned within the second, so 0 0.3 seconds. If I then execute it again, we're just plainly getting the data out of the cache, and you can see that we still, we again have that execution time of 0 0.3 seconds. So we kind of optimized that, that report from 10 seconds to 0 0.3 seconds just by turning on the results at caching. Now this result will linger for 48 hours inside our cache unless we clear the cache or this or turn off results at caching. But I was very interested to see what now would be the impact if we would have the results at caching enabled with that materialized view. So the first time I'm going to execute that materialized view we used in the previous demo, you can see that I have the same speed of, quer of querying, it's 0 0.3 seconds is what we had with the materialized view. But in the letter execution, which is going to use results at caching even, dropped the execution time of our materialized view to 0 0.1 seconds. So we came from about 20 to 30 seconds for that materialized for that view to 0 0.1 seconds, um, let's say 0 0.2 seconds, which is just the rendering, getting the data from Azure to my local system, which means I think we kind of tuned that query to be lightning fast. And that was mainly the goal on my Azure Synapse pools, SQL pools. So I've shown you all the capabilities you have with materialized views, results at caching. There's also some things to do with workload classes, but I'm not going to go deeper in that today. And with that, I would like to hand over the word to um, Rita, who is going to show you the Power BI site. Thanks, Dan. Let's now get started with the Power BI part. And the goal here is to grab all this information that Stan shared with us about Azure Synapse, about performance, and make sure we leverage it to bring our reports in Power BI from normal performance to lightning fast performance. And typically when connecting to most data sources, I tend to pick the import kind. Um, this makes the processing very fast due to the Vertibac engine. However, since in this case, we are going to deal with a fact table of around 60 million rows, that means that could be a bit too much data for an average laptop to handle. And if we have Azure Synapse, then why not leverage direct query? And just with that, we're going to kick import out of the table and let's get started with direct query.
Okay, so we're going to use direct query to connect to two fact tables, the sales and the reseller sales table, and then also get some dimensions so that we can slice and dice our information by date, territory, product, and employee. Having this connection in direct query is going to allow us to see exactly the performance of Azure Synapse. So all of the optimizations that you can do over there, make sure you do them so that our performance within Power BI can be good and then even better. Let's move on to our demo. And in this demo, we're going to connect to Azure Synapse using Direct Query. We're going to select all of our tables that we want to analyze over here. And we're going to see exactly what is the performance of the different visuals, of the different querying to Synapse um, by using DAX Studio and checking exactly how long it takes for our data to load and to be queried from Synapse. And then in the next demos, we're going to see how to make it even faster. But for now, let's go to my desktop. Okay, we're now on my desktop and I have opened this file in which I have already connected to Synapse, but I can do it again for transparency purposes. And let's start by hitting get data, searching for Synapse. Here we go, Azure Synapse Analytics. And then we just need to insert our normal server and database options. So I'll use stand database. And don't forget, click on direct query. That's the first option that we're going to test out. There we go. Here's our list of views and tables. And I have just selected a few of them. As you can see, I have uh, fact internet sales, fact reseller sales. Then I have dim date, dim employee, dim product. And that's it, right? Dim date, dim employee, dim product. Uh, oh, and dim sales territory. Almost forgot that one. Then all you want to do is click on load and that is going to establish your connection to Azure Synapse through direct query. Very well. We now have all the fields here and I have already built the relationships as well. Okay, using all the keys. I have here my fact internet sales. And to test our performance, I will click on view, performance analyzer, I'll minimize these folks here and start recording. So I'll just hop onto my first page in which I have already put a few visuals so we can start loading and sending out the queries. Here we go. You can see that my values have started to show. We have 46 million rows, almost 47 million rows. So quite a good bunch of data. And as you can see here, I have made some standard analysis and this is the card we're going to use as our benchmark. So let me just figure out, okay, it's this one here, the one from the top. I will copy the query and I'll open DAX Studio. I'll connect to my test synapse one. And there you go. When you copy the query, you get both the DAX and the SQL query. Okay, I'll just focus on the DAX and we can run it. I always like to clear, clash, clear cache and run. Um, also, don't forget server timings. This is where we get the good stuff. And when we click on run, we'll see here exactly how long it took. So it took us five seconds, nearly six. You can also take a closer look into the query that's being sent. So this is the select statement that I just got rid of. 
And as you can see down here, it is querying the fact internet sales table. Okay, that is uh, the table where we have our sales amount. So it all adds up. We have nearly six, uh, six seconds, 6,000 milliseconds for us to load this data. Okay, uh, if I go back to my test synapse number one, I can also walk you through all the other visuals. So I'll just stop my performance analyzer and open here the visualizations. So you can see this is just a normal sum of sales amount. I have here count rows. Um, it is like a normal count. Then we have our sales by um, territory country, sales by year, and I have a whole like hierarchy thing going on. And then a bit more drilled information with calendar, but also with product information, mixing, as you can see here on the right, um, data from four different tables. And this is going to be our default speed. So not too bad. It took us um, six seconds to connect to 47 million rows and to make a sum out of it. I mean, it could be better, right? So that's exactly what we're going to see on the next suggestion. Okay, my next step to make our performance really good with Synapse and Power BI is to use aggregations. And in here you can see I have a sales ag table that can be created either by using Power Query Editor in which you can group by your values and have like sum of sales by territory and date key, or you can actually leverage the materialized views that you have in Synapse to make uh, the connection indirect query to a view that you already have instead of building extra stuff in your Power BI report. And the second option is the one I am going to follow. I already have a materialized view uh, that was created as you've seen uh, on Stan's part of the presentation. And that's the one I'm going to connect to in Direct Query, don't forget. And next we're going to do the same thing. We're going to test using DAX Studio just how our performance gets better in comparison with the previous version, just connecting with Direct Query. So let's go on to my desktop. All right, we're now on my Test Synapse 2 file, and we're going to continue building on the work we've done. And that means we're going to continue in Direct Query mode, as you can see on the bottom right corner, but we are going to add our aggregated table. And for that, I have already selected Get Data and connected to my Snaps, but this time I selected a materialized view as my aggregated table. So the materialized view is going to have the sum of sales data grouped by ter territory key and date key. Okay, that is already pre-done in Management Studio by connecting to Synapse. And after doing that, I need to tell Power BI that this is an aggregated table. So to do that, I either right click or click on the ellipses right there, um, manage aggregations. And then let's go straight to some sales amount, select that is a sum. Our detail table is fact internet sales. So if I ever need any um, value related to my sales amount that is not summed, that is not um, already pre-created in my aggregated table, I will need to go into my fact internet sales and I will need to go to the sales amount column. If for some reason your column is showing grayed out, that is because you have a data type mismatch, okay? It has happened to me before, so you have to go ahead and fix it either on your snap side or if you're using the um, created um, table by yourself, the grouped by aggregated table here in Power Query, you can go ahead and change that if you have it imported. Then you're going to click Apply All, and as soon as it is recognized as an aggregated table within Power BI, 
it becomes grayed out. So if you go to the relationships, we're going to see it over there grayed out. All right, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move to our DAX Studio, connect test synapse number two. They're never in order. I don't know why. Then server timings. Let's see it very well. Let's run it. And remember last time it was around six seconds. Now it has decreased to two and a half seconds. Okay. It is now adding an extra line here in our table. So it's selling us match found. Our original table was fact internet sales and it has been mapped to materialize you Rita. That's me. So this is the query that was sent and you can actually see it fetching data from the materialized view now instead of the big million row table that we had before. Okay. So although our query says fact internet sales, sales amount, Power BI and Synapse are able to decode this into pointing to materialized view that was created and that is being referenced by the aggregations. Also, there is a very, very cool feature that Synapse has, which is if you run things more than once in a 48 hour period, and you have the feature active, of course, you are going to be able to leverage the results at cache. And that is going to make sure that when you run it the second time, it is going to take less than before. Okay. Uh, so you can see that it took one second and there was literally no CPU time. So it was uh, just the time that it took for us to connect to Synapse pretty much. And that is it. That's how we made our performance even better. Step number two. All right, and there's one last thing that I can recommend to make your performance even better, and that is to make your sales aggregated table into good old import mode. That is going to make the processing even faster because we are not going to have to reach Synapse and wait for Synapse. We just have it all in our Vertipak engine. That's going to be lightning fast. And next to it, we have date and territory tables. These two are going to be transformed into dual mode. And that is because if we want to use any sort of aggregation that we already have set up in the sales aggregated table that is going to be mapped out with the imported data. But if for some reason we need to fetch the big, big uh, list of values that we have in the sales table, then we are going to want to fetch that data also from the direct query connection to territory or to the date table. So this is our last step here. Let's see just how much our performance has improved from the beginning and let's move on to my desktop. Okay, and we're finally on test synapse number three. This is the file in which we have used the composite models, our last, last step into making our performance lightning fast. And as you can see in the bottom right corner, the storage mode is mixed. So let me show you what I have done here in the model. I have my materialized view over here. It is grayed out still. However, I have changed the storage mode to import. It was in direct query, switched it over to import. And as I did that, I got a prompt asking me to, if I wanted to switch dim date and dim sales territory to dual. Okay, so I said yes, because if I am using the imported queries to the materialized view, um, then, or the queries to the imported materialized view, then I want the filtering to happen just as fast. So I want Power BI to use dim date and dim sales territory that are imported as well. 
However, if for some reason I go ahead and query this big fellow over here, then I want Power BI to be able to, to filter it with the most up-to-date date, uh, data as well. And what's left for us to do? Well, we need to go ahead and check the performance. So I'll move on to my DAX studio. I'll switch my connection to test synapse number three, server timings, and let's go ahead and run it. And as you saw, the total now is 168 milliseconds. So we made it even faster than before. It was one and a half seconds. Now it's less than a second. And of course, well, depending on your computer performance and what you have going on, it might become even faster. Or of course, uh, depending on the complexity of your query, I chose um, a fairly straightforward one, but this is just how much you can gain in performance. We started with around six seconds, got it down to one and a half, and then to less than one second to get our values. And you still see that the match is found between the fact internet sales and the materialized view. However, it is now um, sending a query that's much simpler because it is just using our imported table. It is not fetching it from Synapse. And uh, just going back to our test Synapse number three, if I go to the aggregate plus composite models, you can actually see the values in action and the speed in action. So it was really, really fast. In case you didn't notice, we have the little snail in our left bottom corner and the reason why this one is so slow is because in order to make um, a comparison i decided to use um, data coming from our four tables including tables that are not um, included in the in the materialized view so it's actually querying the data from Synapse, and that's why it takes longer. For some reason, it's taking a bit longer than usual now, but there we go. Our snail query over there in the bottom left and all of our lightning speed or lightning fast queries all around it. So uh, I hope it was clear just how you can use Synapse in Power BI to make really fast reports and how you can leverage these three layers of speed uh, depending on your reporting needs. Thank you so much for being with us during this time. Now let's just quickly recap what we learned in this session, starting with you, Stan. So yes, um, Azure Synapse SQL pools, remember it's really key to choose a good distribution key. Choosing the good distribution key for all your fact tables will make those joins go a lot faster and increase the speed of your reports on your Azure Synapse site. Next to this, for very complex joins, try to use materialized views and see if they can be applicable in your environment. And next to that, results at caching will really help for frequently accessed queries and it is easy to turn on and off whenever you want to. Yeah, and in Power BI, always use aggregations to speed up your model by having the data already aggregated or pre-aggregated, that is going to really, really simplify the queries that are being sent. Then of course, when you're connecting to Synapse, make sure to leverage materialized views and results at caching to make the performance even faster when connecting with direct query. And the final touch is to make it even faster by importing the aggregated table and to use import um, or dual mode for any tables that are going to be used to filter our aggregated table. Okay, awesome. Which means if we do all these things, we might be able to get lightning performance for all our queries and all our reports. That's right. Thank you very much for uh, joining me today, Rita. Uh, and we now have five or 10 more minutes maybe for questions. So pop your questions and we'll be in the chat to answer them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.